Hello my brothers and sisters of nerdness. Yeah, welcome back to the spider's web. As you can see we've got the triceratops here. We've given prime all over in black and then a mid-tone in grey and then along the back and on the top and raised areas in white. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to paint him. Let's put him first to one side and show you this liquid draw acrylic ink set that I've recently bought. As you can see there are eight Sorry, 10 jars of paint, uh, ink in here, and we're starting off with brown. We'll try this one in the airbrush just to see how it goes, see what kind of effect we have. So, get the old airbrush out and open the box. And these are the jars that you get. Now, unfortunately, you don't get a dropper bottle with these. But I do have a pipette, so we'll use that instead. So we'll take the seal off the bottle itself and pop it to one side. I'm not going to use this again, they're just going to go in the bin. And then we'll get the pipette in there, spray some of the brown ink and squirt it into the um, reservoir of the airbrush. Um, now I thought I'd have enough with this bit but I didn't so I'm going to have to go back and get some more shortly. I don't know whether you're going to see that, I can't remember. But I'm going to clean the pipette out now. Uh, just give a few squirts in water and make sure that it's all nice and most of the brown has come off. Get the lid back onto the ink so we don't spill any because it is after all ink and therefore very very watery. And, as you can see, I've also got my blue glove on. So we'll change hands and give the uh, Triceratops a good coating all over in this brown ink. Now I'm saying all over, um, I actually mean the top part of the Mini. I'm saying Mini, it's a model. Jeez, I'm so used to doing Minis, I'm uh, forgetting myself. This is actually a model. A model kit and uh, I say we'll go all over we'll do the bottom as well what the heck I was originally planning just to do the top part but I thought might as well blend it all in and do the bottom as well so yes cover this in the ink now don't try to make it a uniform color um, make some areas lighter some areas darker it only adds to the finished product and uh, the effect with an uneven painting surface or painting coverage rather it does actually help to make it look a little more realistic so yeah we're giving it an all over coating with this brown I do like this I do like this way of painting I haven't done much of this as yet. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like when it's dried. So, yeah, it's a few glossy areas. I was just checking to make sure that they were dry. And in fact, they are. So let's get the inks out again. And this time I'll use a blue ink. Yes, blue on a dinosaur. Well, what am I doing? Well, you'll find out in a moment. It's a nice mid-blue. So we'll do the same again. We'll take the top off. Take the safety seal off. Because these are going to be kept in one position from now on. Get our pipette. We'll just rinse out. Dry it off a little bit more. And then lunge it in. And squirt blue ink into the reservoir of the airbrush once more. And basically this is kind of like a rinse and repeat sort of thing. Each time you get a new um, colour of ink, you just lift up in the pipette. And obviously, put it in the reservoir. Um, there we are. One thing I will need to do first, switch the compressor on. That might work. Let's see if it does. Yes, it does surprisingly enough. You get air going through it. 
and the airbrush works. So we're doing this blue on all the shadow areas because blue is a nice colour for shadows. So we'll do it on all the underneath parts, all areas that are going to be in shadow. We're going to add it to the creases and crevices and skin. And I'm going to make a few lines and these patterns in the skin as well, just to make it a little more interesting to look at. And what does I say? We're making sure that all the uh, undersides, anything that's going to be in shadow, any little creases are going to be covered in this blue ink. Um, and we're not going mad with it either. Just every now and again, just pop a little bit of blue ink here and there where well, there's a dip. And now let us try the green. Hmm. Same again. It's out of the box. You can have a look at the green ink first. It's a nice deep green. It looks quite similar to a phthalo green. I think so. We'll take the lid off, take the cap off once more, get the pipette out, and squirt some in the airbrush. Oops, a little bit of water left on the pipette. Well, I'll squirt, drop it into the airbrush. Now, what? We don't want too much of this, but we want just enough to cover all the brown areas. And we're not looking again for a really solid colour of this green. Um, the patchier really, the better. We'll just make sure it's going out properly and let's get to it. So I'm going to start off making little designs and little splotches first. Um, going over, making sure you don't cover the blue areas too greatly. Uh, but we're going over every word that is brown to a greater or lesser extent as I say it's nice to have it just like a patchy colour and we're not touching the horns either or any of the bony bits like over the carapace is it a carapace? the uh, little collar neck armament kind of thing we're just gonna avoid those any bony bits we'll avoid and as you can see, we're just going to patch it. And now into this, we're going to have a little ye lemon yellow. Um, again, a very nice little colour. I wish the only thing, the only downside with these pots of, of ink is that you don't get the little squirty pipette kind of things. I drop the tops with it like you do with uh, another, is it Liquitex that you get them with? Or Dale or Rowney, I don't know. But thought what the heck give these a try I've never used them before so what the heck um, so I'll pop a few drops into the green because I want this a little different in shade and we'll just squirt it on we're not doing we're not going overboard with this it's a bit too bright to go overboard um, all we're doing just adding a few little um, sprays here and the just again to change the colour somewhat. It's a very leafy kind of green and possibly not what you would expect a Tyrannosaurus to look like. Now bear in mind we're not finished yet so uh, don't judge it until while it's halfway done. Now let's get into orange. We're getting quite a few colours in this but you know just just wait and see see what you think of it it's not too bad when it's uh, finished so once again I'll open it up take the safety out cover off get the pet out da -da 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 -da. you've seen this a few a few times before I am, I'm putting this in just to show what I'm doing um, and in this case, I'm showing what I'm doing quite badly because you can't see what I'm doing, but oh well, I'm obviously putting the ink into the airbrush. And we're going to go over the um, upper sides and anything that you, 
what that's not underneath. I'm ignoring anything that's underneath now. Everything is on the all, all we're painting now is the top areas. And as I say, we're just painting little patches. I'm also going over the horns. Um, little patches of this orange just to bring out a little bit more colour and a little bit more brightness. Um, So we're not going for a full coverage, we're just making little splotches here and there of this colour. And uh, at the moment, yes, it does look shiny, but you know, once it dries, once it dries up, the shine loosens a bit. So let's try some just yellow. Um, yeah. Let's not try yellow, shall we? It's not showing up terribly well. It's not giving any form of coverage, or it doesn't seem to be. So we'll just you know, give that a miss. We've tried it. It doesn't work. It's added a little bit of lightness to the horns, but nothing really noticeable. So no, let's not do that. Instead, let's get... Ah, I forgot to press record. All I've done here, as you may be able to see, I've got some desert yellow. So I'm painting desert yellow. And I've got some of my um, painted spaceship exterior. I've put them on the palette, CD palette. And I've got a nice soft brush, this brush. Got a little bit of paint of the desert yellow on and give it a good dry brushing. And then once I've done that, I've dipped it into the white as well, while the brush is still dirty, and gone over it with the white just to make it a lot more brighter. And that is basically how it looks. It's not looking, you know, the same as it was. It's taken off a lot of that shininess. But I think now we're going to go into the dark tone and emphasize some of the shadows a little bit more. So let's turn palette, uh, CD palette over and squirt some of this um, dark tone onto the palette. And with a brush, we just go around any areas and emphasize some areas that need to be made a little darker. Going over the antlers, my antlers, horns, and also, as you can see, into the crevices and folds and any recesses and the nooks and crannies that are in the uh, skin of the Tyrannosaurus, uh, not the Tyrannosaurus, the Triceratops. I wonder if I said Tyrannosaurus at first. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> if I did, I'm sorry. But it's a Triceratops, not a Tyrannosaurus. Um, so I'm going to do that and add a few uh, you know, dark areas here and there to the flesh. And uh, if you run out, add some more to the palette. And also just pick out dark, you know, pick out recessed areas, folded areas, put a few dark splotches on it. Um, add a little bit of skin design to it. And now let us take some dark stone. Quite happy with that. And the dark stone, um, you may be surprised where we're going to be putting this. Then again, you may not be surprised. Because we're going to put this one on the eyes and the bony areas. Yes, the horns are going to get this. The eyes are going to get it just as a base coat. Um, and then we're also going to go around that carapace, around the back of the head, and go through all the bony areas with that. So that's what we're doing with the um, dark stone and then we're going to be going into the time consuming parts of this particular um, painting session and you'll see what we're doing in a moment so I'm guessing with the uh, desert yellow I will mix a little bit of that with the dark stone and I've already given it a very watery wash kind of thing 
with Dark Stone again. I forgot to, once again, forgot to press record because I did on this uh, model in stages. Um, and now what I'm trying to do is do a wet, nice wet blend um, to make it look as though it's darker at the base of the horn and then lighter as it comes out further and further. So, as I say, mixing in some of the desert yellow with the dark stone and then just putting pure desert yellow over. Um, as you can see there, I'm having desert yellow. I'm trying to disguise words as any um, point in the comics, harsh division. And then we'll add some of the um, spaceship exterior as well. Then found, then realised I've forgotten to do the carapace bony area, so we'll do that before we go any further. I don't know why I decided to do this now, because it's just taking time away from the horns, which I really needed to do when they were wet, but how silly of me. But we can try our best to disguise any form of harsh lines, and we're just adding here a mix of the desert yellow and the spaceship exterior. Um, so once we've done that we'll try our best to blend in and disguise any of these harsh lines that may show up and yeah. Now we're going to dark grey blue. Uh, this is a Vallejo colour and this we're going to be going over the eyeball and yes you might be very confused or very surprised to learn that I'm actually doing the eyes on this and that's because well they are fairly large I suppose even I can get a brush in there to paint them um, but I'm not used to doing eyes so there's my problem but what we're doing is painting the whole of the eyeball white or this spaceship grey Thing. and while we're waiting for that to dry we'll go back to the horns and do the tip of the horns and the tips of the carapace with a much brighter mix of the desert yellow and spaceship exterior and all these lumps on its body we're going to um, paint those with this mix as well and I did get a comment when I put this together about why they put the bumps on well, I'm no uh, dinosaur expert. Uh, I assume they put it on just for like making it look a little more interesting. But they put it, they mould it so that it's very orderly, you know, as in lines. So I don't know what to make of it. Um, so now we're taking some of the white and going over all of the eyeball. I think that's what I was doing. Um, so the entire eyeballs are white now which they weren't before I just did a half of them white but I didn't like the way they looked so I decided to paint them all white it's not finished yet don't panic don't panic because what I'm going to be doing is bringing in another ink this one is black and this one we're going to paint the eyeballs just a little bit at the front. But that's it for this video. At the end of it you'll be seeing the finished product. But until next time, as always, stay safe and take care. God bless and bye for now.